You get told constantly to consolidate your learning after each lesson. And I get asked a lot, what does that actually mean? And what is the best way to consolidate? So keep watching and I'm gonna talk you through the best ways to consolidate what you've learned to help you achieve those top grades and to improve your knowledge and memory in biology. So firstly, what do we mean by consolidate? Very quickly, it's just different things you can do to check you've understood the knowledge and to go over it in a way that will help embed it in your long-term memory. So firstly, how often should you consolidate? Now ideally, what I'd recommend is once per week per subject. And I'm assuming you probably have four lessons per week. That is the average. So you don't need to consolidate after every lesson necessarily, but maybe find one hour a week per subject that you are going to consolidate. Now I say ideally review once a week because any longer than that and you would have forgotten basically all of the information from the lesson and you're then starting from scratch. And if you actually have a look at this graph just here, Ebbing House's forgetting curve, this is the research on this. And you can see just how quickly you forget something. And that is why you do want to be consolidating once a week because look at the updated graph. If you consolidate once a week, you can see that your memory of the topic is going to be much better retained and eventually it's then stored in your long-term memory. I do recommend that when you consolidate your learning, you don't always just stick to one technique. Because if you do mix it up, there's multiple benefits. Number one, it keeps it more interesting. But number two, each different technique also develops a slightly different exam skill. So by doing all of them over a longer period of time, you're improving your skills as well as your knowledge. And in this video, I'm gonna talk you through my favorite methods to consolidate so you can pick and choose what you do in that hour and try them all and then see which you prefer. Now, I'm gonna give you a little heads up that there is no exam questions in this video. Yep, that's right, it might come as a shock, but I do not recommend completing exam questions as a consolidation technique. They are an amazing revision technique, but not consolidation. They aren't gonna be as useful as some of these other methods I'm gonna go through at improving your understanding, checking your understanding, and your long-term memory. Exam questions are better for when you have consolidated, checking at that stage that you have understood everything. So number one, if you've ever watched any of my videos, you will know I'm such an advocate of flashcards. I absolutely love flashcards, but you do have to use them correctly. Flashcards should not be a small little card with all of your notes crammed on it. Because that's not a flashcard. That is just you squeezing your notes onto a tiny piece of paper. Flashcards should just have one key idea and test that idea on each card. And that way it really isolates which bit of a topic you have or haven't understood. So stick to just putting definitions, reactions, key terms on those cards. And this could be a really good way to consolidate your learning in that one hour that I said to try and aim for every week. Sit down and look at all of your notes for that week, or if you have got my A-level notes, this will make this so much quicker for you because on my A-level notes for every single page, I give you a list of the key words and that tells you straight away what the flashcard should be. But have a look at your lessons for that week and pick out the key words and create your flashcards. And that is your consolidation done. You've created your flashcards, maybe use them once that week, but ongoing when you do your consolidation and revision, that's when you'll be testing yourself with the flashcards. Now, the reason I love this as a consolidation technique is, is consolidating your knowledge whilst also creating your revision resources. So when it comes to your first test, you've already made all of the flashcards that you need for that test. So instead of spending hours making the flashcards, they're pre-made and then you just get on straight away testing yourself. Now to give you a rough idea of perhaps how many flashcards you might need, from my experience, I'd say in one lesson, you'll probably be able to make somewhere between five and 10 flashcards. On average, that's how many key words or key terms come up per lesson. So if you are gonna be doing this every week, you'll probably be making 10 to 20 flashcards a week, and that you can easily fit into your one hour consolidation slot. 
What I find works really well with the cells topic is to create flashcards like this where you can have the organelle structure on one side and a diagram of what the organelle looks like on the other side because one of the common questions is identifying the organelles on images such as micrographs. I'd also have a second flashcard for each organelle in which you are going to either describe the structure or I've done here the function. Now in terms of how best to use them, I use something called the Lightness System. And this is where you go through your cards and you separate them into ones you got correct, ones you didn't, and the ones that you didn't, you repeat more often. For example, the next day and the others repeat three days later. Exam technique number two is one that I also love. I mean, I love all of these, that's why I've put them in my video, but it is blurting. And you might do this already, but just don't call it blurting. But what you need to do is, Set yourself a timer. And if you're gonna do this for your four lessons this week, I suggest you do four blurts and do five minutes on each blurt. So set yourself a five minute timer and write down, draw everything you can remember from that lesson. And the best thing about a blurt is it shouldn't be neat. You don't have to worry about it being all pretty because that's not the point of them. And if you've got a whiteboard, even better, just blur onto the whiteboard. So you draw and write everything you can remember. And you cannot look at your notes or any resources when you do this. When the five minutes is up, that is when you then get out your class notes or you can use my A-level notes. And you look to see what did you forget or maybe you got wrong. And you correct that in a really bright coloured pen so it stands out what you didn't remember very well. So do that for all four of your lessons. And as I said, that's five minutes per blurt, plus maybe five, 10 minutes of the corrections. That is your hour consolidation done. Now, really though, with the blurts, the way they're most effective is if you repeat a blurt for that topic, maybe in three days time, and then again in a week, and then you can see that you should remember more every time. But you've got to play that by ear and see how much time you actually have available for that. But when you're revising for a test, definitely do it multiple times. That's a really good strategy. want to just point out you might be thinking and you probably are thinking this I love those ideas but where is this time coming from because I have my extracurricular I have to help my family do certain jobs I've got a part-time job and you're telling me to on top of everything else I already do find magically four hours of consolidation time for all of my A levels as in one hour per subject well, that isn't exactly what I'm saying because your homework also counts as consolidation. So if your teacher is setting you some questions or an activity linked to the lesson, that is your consolidation for that lesson. You don't have to do extra on top of that. If your teacher is already directly giving you work, that is to consolidate your learning. And they might not explicitly tell you it is, but if it is homework linked to that lesson, it is consolidation. So for that lesson, you don't need to do something else again. But for that to be effective, you have to complete this homework to the best of your ability with your full effort. 
not just quickly scribble down some answers or something when you realize, oh my gosh, it's half an hour until the lesson, I've not done anything, can I quickly have a look at yours, scribble something down, hand it in, that's not consolidating your learning. You do still have to take it as one of the sections of time where you're going to really check you've understood it. But that should make it more manageable, being aware that your homework counts as consolidation. You only do the extras if you haven't been set as much homework or no homework for that lesson. Now, another way to help you to consolidate is creating a study group. So what I think is a really, really good technique for people who struggle to stay motivated and focused and they really benefit from like the social aspect of study is find a group of people from your school, your college, who are like-minded and want to really do well and ask them, do they want to make a weekly study group with you? And the idea would be that once a week you find maybe half an hour or an hour that you can all meet up. Ideally, you don't want more than four or five people in the group and you test each other. So it could be that you decide to create your own flashcards, but then in that study group, you test each other with the flashcards, or maybe one of you holds the notes or the textbook, fire out short answer questions, and the other one has to answer. But the key would be you have to be actively testing each other. You're not just sitting together doing work quietly, because that's not a study group, that's just going to the library with someone basically. So a study group, you should be testing each other and that will keep you motivated. So another technique that you can use is something that I call picture to text or text to picture. And I don't have a fancy name for it, it is basically what it sounds like. So instead of wasting time, just copying out notes, rewriting your notes, if you do like to have a set of notes of a sort, then you might quite like this activity. So use your textbook and where you do have a chunk of text, turn it into an image and that really tests that you've understood what you read because you've had to turn it into a picture. Or you can do it the other way around. Any pictures in your textbook that do show a process or a structure in a cell, whatever it might be, turn that into a paragraph or bullet point list, again, to show that you've really understood what you're looking at in your textbook. <laughs> to fit in all of your commitments. As I said earlier, you might have extracurricular, you might have family commitments, you might have a job, you've got homework, you've got revision, there is a lot going on. So if you are thinking, this is great, but I'm a bit overwhelmed, there's no way I can ever fit this in, I'm here to tell you you can. And that is why I think the next thing you should do now is definitely go and watch this video where I go through time management for an A-level student and I talk you through an exact schedule of how you can fit it all in. So head there now. That is it for this video though. I hope you have found it helpful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up below. And if you aren't already subscribed, then make sure you subscribe, click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future tips and tricks to get you that A star.